it's time for the Susan Taylor Podcast, where we discuss the yoga of mind, medicine, and healing. Author of Feeling Good Matters, Sexual Radiance, and the Vital Energy Program, Dr. Taylor imparts authentic knowledge and practical tools that inspire, educate, and empower us to be a healing force for positive change. So join us and take your life and our planet to the next level. Hello and welcome to episode 155, Reclaim Your Mind, Tips to Restore Optimism. You know, many of us have such great intentions to live with a peaceful and calm mind, but with all the unsettledness that we find in worldly affairs that have actually surfaced during this last year, well, that's taken a toll on our peace of mind, and I think all of you would probably agree with that one time or another, our peace of mind has been a bit tweaked. You know, having peace of mind requires that we have a healthy organism, namely a body, a mind, and a soul that's in tune with its inherent nature. When we shift our mindset to being positive, we start to witness many amazing opportunities that come our way, and we start to feel whole and peaceful again. You know, I always say focusing on breath is one channel for regaining peace of mind from the inside out, but there's many, many other ways too. But the breath is what we teach when we do our meditation trainings. So we really need to, you know, hone in on what we're talking about here and how can we really reclaim our mind? And we know from my book, Return to Radiance, that I talk about that, reclaiming the mind. You know, we're beginning the second week of the Center for Meditation Science Guided Meditations for Positive Energy. And this week we're going to experience how to work with our energy and tap into our vital essence using our mind. And I always say, by paying attention to our breath, we gain access to our mind and we establish peace and tranquility. As we exist in this body that we know of, right, it's on a physical plane, but we also live at another level, and that's the level of the mind, and no one would argue with that. Because the mind is part of us that perceives, thinks, reasons, and evaluates. The mind is also a powerful energy that needs to be fine-tuned, and because of its energetic nature that occurs, you know, through our thoughts and our perceptions, our physical world is actually a result of what we think and perceive. By knowing this, we can change our physical world simply by changing our thoughts and beliefs. And then we even have another layer that exists beyond the mind, and that's the deepest level of our consciousness. And here is where our spirit resides. Now, the spirit is unchanging and eternal. So when we tap into this level, we have instant access to all our potential possibilities. And it's here where our light shines very, very bright. Our words, our thoughts, perceptions, and beliefs, they actually create our reality. And as I mentioned, manifest in the physical world through our actions. So when we experience this inner chamber of our existence, then we're able to navigate our own life. We transform from where we are to a place of pure radiance. And that's where the title came, Return to Radiance. It's really returning to identifying and recognizing the self, the self that's the dweller within our presence of where we are. Therefore, when I talk about radiance, it doesn't spring from an external source, but it comes from within. It's that our thoughts go around, that our intentions, our attentions, our beliefs, We are really powerful creative beings and with proper guidance and training for our mind, we can change our perceptions and then thought, you know, what happens out of that is we change our mind and then we change our reality. So we're able to transform our thoughts and perceptions into what we want to have them be. And then we begin to speak and understand nature's reality. And we learn to tap into that abundant flow of energy that we have information that's offered from that space and that's our intelligence and the result well the result is happiness and fulfillment and as i said in one of our classes i believe or one of the meditations last week that's our birthright so how do we begin working to reclaim our mind well i would say a few things 
One is one size does not fit all. We all know that. That's why I work privately with people. Each person is a unique individual. I can do generalizations in classes, generalizations in courses, but privately, each person is unique. And there's always a little thing that just gets tweaked and all of a sudden everything just blossoms and opens. So remember, one size does not fit all. The second thing I would say is start modestly and don't try to do too much at once because that often sets us up for unrealistic expectations. When I teach the meditation classes or even the courses, what I do with that is I say, start with five minutes a day. Three to five minutes a day is plenty to start because everyone gets enthusiastic, especially when I'm teaching and the group is there and we all support each other. And everybody wants to do 20 to 30 minutes a day. Well, after the first week, that becomes a little different difficult. So we start five minutes. And if you want to add more, then you can. And I usually coach and help people with that. The third is start by paying attention to how you breathe. And we start really modestly, as I said, three to five minutes, maybe a couple of times a day to just check in. And you can go to the YouTube video day three, in which I give a guided practice on how to get started with the breath in Makarasana, the, the crocodile pose. And meditation, you know, we talk about meditation, but that's just one component of stress reduction and resilience. But it's not the only component. In order to reclaim your mind, we really need four components. And I'm going to tell you what those four are. The first is awareness, which is mindfulness. Mindfulness is really awareness. And we need to recognize that. The second component is connecting to your breath. When the breath is brought back through awareness and systematic body awareness, then we strengthen our confidence and resilience. The third component is self-reflection. To become aware of what dialogue we're writing in our mind. What are we doing? Who and what is taking the space and not paying the rent? But I, what I've done, and I have even did this last week, and I'm doing it again this week in our guided meditations, is I say, welcome it, but don't give it so much space. Some people that have a very negative self-narrative, that's okay. They have negative self-beliefs and they actually hold those beliefs to be true description of who they are. So just welcome it, pay attention. And of course, we don't follow it and we don't really uh, subscribe to it because that is a prescription for depression. You know, part of well-being and essential to cultivating resilience is to welcome the narrative but understand the narrative is pre-programmed dialogue recognizing it for what it is which is really a bunch of thoughts so keep that in mind the essential for cultivating resilience and bringing positivity into our life is to welcome the narrative and understanding that narrative is you know that narrative that we have is really pre-programmed dialogue so recognize it, recognize it for what it is, and which is really, as we know, a bunch of thoughts. So remember, in the first week of guided meditations for positive energy, I say that the essence of meditation is awareness, and awareness is pure space. The clouds that we have, they're the thoughts that come and go, but they don't affect the space because that space is you. It's that eternal being that I mentioned. That's where the soul dwells. The fourth component is to meditate. Bring your mindfulness in component one and bring it into focus. So mindfulness into focus is really what we want to do. Research shows that focus creates happiness. Focus happens when we unite our breath with our mind and bring it to home base. What comes out of learning to meditate skillfully is that you identify your life's purpose. You come to know your direction. It's about identifying our true north, where we're going, our sense of direction in life, and most importantly, aligning more and more to our everyday behavior with a sense of purpose. So join me on YouTube for the next few weeks of our guided meditations for positive energy and to support the program outlined in my new book, Return to Radiance, Transform to Vitality. That's what these meditations are set up to do, to really support the program in Return to Radiance. And that brings us to the end of this episode. And if you'd like to be notified weekly for new podcasts, please subscribe. The Susan Taylor Podcast is available on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and TuneIn. 
Also on SusanTaylor.org, where you can click on the podcast to subscribe. And contact us at SusanTaylor.org with any questions, comments, and feedback. I am enjoying the feedback I'm getting. Everyone says they're enjoying the morning meditations on YouTube. So I'm pleased to hear that. And thank you for listening. The Susan Taylor Podcast does come out every week. And again, questions, comments, let me know. I do answer them and I put them into the uh, mix of creating content for you. And until next time, everyone, please remain calm, consciously aware, living in the moment.